Does anybody else have any questions? Yes. Not a question, but I'd like to thank you for a couple of things. Um, first, just your performance on One Punch, because um, One Punch has become one of the animes my dad's actually watching, and he doesn't watch a lot of anime. So that's like amazing. That's awesome. And then two, uh, your live tweets, because they're hilarious. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder where they go and if people are actually seeing them. I live tweet all the episodes, or most of them. Um, we're going to try to do it tonight, but we have a show at, at 1 in the morning. <laughs> so I don't know if I can get one via TV. Is that like the loud thing? Yeah, loud, annoying, and very annoying. Uh, it's uh, an 18 and up show. If you guys are up at 1 a.m., it's going to be fun. It's a very fun show. Lots of laughs, um, improv, and, and sketch comedy, and anime and pop culture stuff. It's great. Um, bam, got the plug in. Uh, so, yeah, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I'm so happy that your dad is into the show as well. Yeah. That's really cool. That's so fun. I can't imagine my parents ever watching anime. <laughs> even my, even my, what? Not even if you're in it? They've seen, they've seen my stuff, but they're not gonna, they're not the type, they just, they don't watch cartoons. Mm -hmm. They never watched cartoons. As a kid, my parents would always be like, they don't watch cartoons. Blah, 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 blah. Um, they sound nothing like that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it would be fun to, they do, they do like watching the stuff that I'm in now. They're, they're, they're proud parents. Remember, these are the parents who are like, just change your major, Max. Stop fiddling around with pre-med, being stupid about it. Um, Stop being unhappy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, once I told them that I was going to drop out of college, they were like, get a degree in anything. We don't care. Um, just get a degree. Um, uh, I did. Hello. Pay no attention to the noise behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good. Do your thing. Um, any other, anything else? Any other questions? I mean, are you saying that they'll walk into your shows blind? Like, they'll just... Like, they have no idea what it is. ...and just, like, watch it and say, okay. My parents came to Anime Expo, which is in Los Angeles, which has, like, a, over 100,000 people. We did this huge event. Um, this um, One Punch Matsuri, and they came here. I wanted them to come see that and see the impact that it has on you guys and fans everywhere who watch the show. And that was one of the first times I think they realized, oh, this is, this is a big deal. Um, but usually they have no idea. I told them beforehand what it was about. <laughs> um, but still, how, how much can you really tell someone what One Punch Man is about? <laughs> and they don't, they're not surprised in some way when they watch the first episode. Mm. Um, that crab latte scene, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, they know. And then, like, Transformers Rescue Bots, uh, I'm in that. I play a Transformer. Um, they've watched that for the past couple years. Um, every time I'm in it, they love it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, they enjoy watching the stuff. What's your favorite one that you, what's your favorite character to a voice? Um, it's like picking children. Uh, it's so, <laughs> that, that particular question I don't think I've ever found an answer for. Yesterday I came close to finding an answer. Um, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite characters, I can't, I can't pick a favorite, yeah. but um, one of my favorites was just a one-off guest uh, spot I did on a show on Nickelodeon called Red Winners. Um, where I played this character called the Polter Goose, who literally in the audition it says is a, a cross between uh, Steve Urkel from Family Matters, right? Family Matters, and um, the Crypt Keep Keeper from um, Tales of the Crypt. So the Crypt Keeper is like this, right? He's just like a skeleton. And then um, Steve Urkel, in my head, was just a nerd. So I took the nerd voice. And the Crypt Keeper voice, and turn it into one, and it became the Poltergeist. <laughs> and it says on the copy, annoying. It literally says, this character annoys the main characters. That's the, the goal of the character. And so, I just made him as annoying as possible. 
uh, and he became this really annoying character, and it was my first original like character that I ever did. Um, meaning, not it was not voiced by someone else in, in Japanese, it was never voiced by someone in English, it was a new character. So that has a special place in my heart. Um, um, yeah, and Blur from Transformers, because that was my first recurring character. So, both those characters are like two of my favorites. I saw your hand. What was your first exposure to One Punch Man? First exposure to One Punch Man was the audition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the audition came around and I was like, man, just another anime. Um, and then I spoke to my friend, uh, Ray Chase, and he was like, nah, dude, watch the show. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna audition for it. I know what it's about. I get it. It's a hero. It's, it's strong. And no, nah, dude, watch the show. <laughs> so I watched the first episode and Binged the next eleven because I loved it so much, um, and uh, that was my yeah that was that was when I first first got into it, and then I got super nervous for the audition. Thanks a lot, Ray, um, because I wanted it real bad after that. I actually auditioned for Saitama, Genos, uh, Moomin Rider, a My Mask, and Speed of Sound Sonic. Um, how did that happen? I got a sixth. <laughs> that was five. Um, so, and I thought I was going to get Genos because I've voiced, there's a game called Star Ocean 5. Does anybody know that one? Yeah, it's in your backpack. Um, it's in your backpack. <laughs> awesome. Um, Star Ocean 5, I play the main character, Fidel, who's voiced by uh, Kaito Ishikawa, I want to say. Yes. And um, I, I may be wrong. I'm being filmed. Um, but I thought I was going to get Genos because Genos is voiced by the same actor. And um, the producer, Dave, I found out later when he heard my audition was like, you were it. You were it. You were the only guy that I could for, for Saitama. And I was like, I don't know a little bit for Genos? Um, he's like, no, no. It was, it was totally Saitama all the way. So... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That answers that question. Anybody else? And, um, did you see, for One Punch Man, did you see that last episode where that giant alien was spying? Oh, wait! Spoiler alert! Who's not seen the last episode of One Punch Man? Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five! No spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it! Can't do it! Unless you make it very vague. <laughs> Unless it's not a vague question, it's a very specific question. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> would it be okay if you said your final move? The final move? No. The one. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. They're all looking at me like, don't do it, please. I'm begging you. It would kill me. Um, I can't do it. We'll do it afterwards. Fine. Afterwards. Afterwards. Um, Are you saying uh, difference in anime versus Western animation? Yes. Uh, and and like rewriting lines. Yes. So yeah, like so matching lip flaps. There there are a lot of rewrites that happen, but within the restraint of the time of how of the lip flaps. Not only the time, but the number of flaps. A lot of times the director tries to. I'm like, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so a lot of times the director will try to um, match like a, a closed lip sound with when the animation closes its mouth so it's less jarring when you watch it it doesn't take you out of the animation um, but in western animation most of the stuff that I've done is pretty set there are 99% of the lines that we go through and we don't make any changes. The 1%, usually it's, eh, just cut this, or uh, we're gonna change this one word to another word so it doesn't sound weird or whatever. So 
so they have the freedom to do that, but there's still the restriction of you have the way a script is written out. It's very specific. Um, sometimes in a show, there's an act. Uh, of, say Transformers Rescue Box, for instance. There's an act one, an act two, and a final act. And so you have to have the lines. Uh, the scripts are about 30 pages each for a 30-minute show or 22-minute show. Um, and uh, you have to match the number of lines with how long it takes to get to that commercial break, and then that commercial break to the end of the show. Um, so there's still that restraint. So you can't be like, cut that, cut that, cut that, add this. You know, you can't go hog wild. But there is freedom to, you, you're not beholden to lip lap, you know? Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yes? Has there, been, has there been any funny moments when you're recording a line in anything you've done? <laughs> any funny moments? Mm -hmm. Um, funny moments when I'm recording a line or something. So in One Punch Man, my director Chris and I uh, have a recurring joke. Um, I played him this video one time. I should just show you guys the video, huh? Go. Um, I gotta find it. But it's this, well I just find the video. We're all gonna watch this video now, because that's what I've decided that we're gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna find it. Oh, I think I sent it to him on Twitter. Okay, hang on. Uh, messages, Chris Kaysen, where would it have been? Um, oh, there's no reception, Never mind. <laughs> um, it's basically a video of this guy. It's, it's a weird thing. This guy is like a professional paster of ice cream, so he's it's just a guy in glasses and he's, he's got ice cream and he's like, mm. and he takes a bite and every time he takes a bite he goes, swallow it around, mix it up, warm it up, move it around, <laughs> and it's, it's, you've seen this one, yeah. and uh, it's just absurd and someone did a cut of it where you've got like a hundred of his mouth on the screen. Right? <laughs> Uh, it's stupid, but we constantly in the session are stopping like every 15 minutes if the engineer is editing something and I'll, I'll randomly go. <laughs> and then he'll do it back in the talk back to me so I'll hear it like in my cans. It's dumb. Um, other funny lines, there's bloopers all the time, uh, all the time, um, but we, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, that would, you'd have to see the bloopers for those to be funny. Um, but inside jokes, we've got a lot of those inside jokes. Uh, like another one is, when I was first trying to nail down the character of Saitama, um, it was frustrating because I was like, I'm trying not to make him sound like a dick. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, and so we, we worked really hard on that, but, um, but I had this like alter ego in the booth, which was like, like nervous or like anxious Saitama. You just sounded like this. Um, it's very silly. It's very silly. And uh, you know, sometimes inside jokes need to remain inside jokes, and I need to learn that. <laughs> anyway, um, there's stuff like that. So it's it's fun stuff. We always have a good time. Yes. Uh, do you know Hero Academia? My Hero Academia. Yeah. I don't watch it, but I know of it. You should. I should. <laughs> okay. What would happen if they made a crossover between One Punch Man and Hero Academia? Whoa. Oh, I don't know. What's My Hero Academia about? Uh, <laughs> what's the what's the best way to explain that? I guys? think it's about your, it's about some. It's about kids who. What? Like everyone's born with superpowers. It's kind of like it's kind of like, 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 it's it's kind of like if the thank one, you yes. It's girl, like if the One Punch Man universe universe didn't have so Saitama. Like, so it's like yes. what's that movie Superhero High or something? Oh Sky God! High. High. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. God. yeah. yeah. Uh, so what would happen? School. Well, is Saitama now a kid or is Saitama still Saitama? I'm just like normal Saitama. He's normal Saitama, so he'd be the the he'd be the coach. He'd be the. Uh, <laughs> oh my character. Um, like the all my. Oh my. All my. Oh wait. Oh my. I think it's kind of like Saitama, but not that powerful. Well, 
then he'd be. I, I don't. Guy. I don't think All Might could could base Rock Saitama. Well, you know, All Might's been losing his, his powers. So he's yeah. Good. I don't know. I think he'd be a good like coach of the yeah. athlete of whatever athletic team is on. What, what would Saitama coach? I guess track. track. Yeah. Track, yeah. Probably. Yeah. They had that episode where they did shot put, which was very weird. Oh. I know, I know, he doesn't have the coordination for anything else. Um, I don't you know, the whole like, room teacher sleeps half the time anyways. That's true. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, so. he's he, maybe, so maybe he teach like meditation. <laughs> he doesn't really meditate though. He doesn't do anything. Just he runs. Excellent <laughs> lives in there. I think that all the time when I'm watching One Punch Man, I'm just like, look at you lying. It's like, <laughs> to Jenna, I'm like, just prattles them off. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the worst anime you've ever seen. Worst anime I've ever seen? Worst anime you've ever done. Or ever, or ever done. Uh, I haven't really done any bad anime. Uh, I can't think of anything. The wor worst anime I've ever seen. I also can't think of like a bad. Yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, random stuff that I find online, but I don't know what that. Uh, no, don't worry about it. Uh, come to a, come to a lava. It's, uh, it's one o'clock in the morning. Uh, you guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll shut the question because I can't really think of a bad anime. Uh, I'll like say the bad, uh, the worst job I've ever done. I'll say, I'll tell you that one. Uh, that one was my first ever job. First ever job. It's the worst job I've ever done. Um, it was me. I got. I got referred by my dad to this guy that he met. This guy was like, I need a voiceover for a commercial I'm doing for TicketBus.com. And uh, TicketBus.com is literally a business that tries to get you out of your speeding ticket. Um, so this guy was like, come, come to this location at this time and uh, it's a paid gig. And I thought, oh my gosh, my first professional voiceover gig dressed up real nice for it. I was like, this, I gotta, this could be recurring work and this could go on forever and I can make a million dollars off of this. And I get to a house. It's at a house. And, um, hello. Hey. I made it. You made it. <laughs> I'm just telling the story about my worst uh, job ever, um, which was my first uh, VO gig. So I, I get to this house and I knock on the door. I go, this is a weird studio. Uh, <laughs> knock on the door, nobody answers. I open the door, nobody's there. Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, I hear, yeah, I'll be right down. And I go, okay. Um, you were on to catch a predator. <laughs> and I, I was, yeah, it was the weirdest. I was like, okay, someone's gonna jump out and just start attacking me with a knife or something. Um, so, um, so I uh, do, so he finally comes downstairs, I go upstairs, he goes, okay, um, I am going to, uh, he goes, what, was, what did he say, he goes, um, uh, cause what did I, I think I brought the script with me, at the time I didn't know any better, the, the client always has a script for you as a voice actor. But I, I, I didn't know anybody, so I brought the script, and he, he looks at me and he goes, oh, you brought a script, good. And I go, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't memorize the lines. Like, he expected me to memorize the lines, and right there I was like, uh-oh. I've never had a voiceover job before, but that doesn't sound good. Um, so he goes, I'm really excited, I bought this $100 mic. Uh, and he goes, and it sounds really good, and it was a handheld. It was like a recorder, like that. And, and I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> um, and he goes, and I go, oh, okay, so where's the studio? And he goes, well, the walk-in closet right over here. <laughs> uh, walk-in closet, no. Um, he goes, he opens it up, it's this tiny space about this big. Like, <laughs> not, it's this big. And half of it is filled with a, like a cabinet for clothes. <laughs> and so you literally have to go like this in the space, walk in this way. So he says, um, uh, oh, there's no lights in here. And he kind of just looks. I'm like, 
what do you expect me to do? He's like, he's like, this is the best place to record because it's dead. Well, guys, yeah, no, it was not the best place to record. It sounded like a box. It sounded like this. Basically, I was recording in a box. Um, and so there's no light. So I take out my phone, and I've got the script in my hand. I'm used to this. My, my script, right? Uh, the script is here. The phone is here. I have the light from my phone like this <laughs> over my script, right? Because remember, I'm in the closet like this. So I'm here, and he squeezes his arm with the recorder in front of my mouth. I'm reading a script like that, right? That was my first job. Um, terrible experience. Uh, but made everything else, I was so grateful for every other job that I had. Uh, so, so yeah, that's... Uh, that was my worst, worst thing I've ever done. Uh, but also the best thing I've ever done when you think about it was my first job. It was my first professional voiceover experience. So also awesome. You did get paid. Did you get paid? Uh, yeah, oh, I did get paid. Question. I did get paid. <laughs> yes, uh, I did get paid, and the check is framed in my home. So, <laughs> yep. My mom did that for me. <laughs> Thanks, mom. I'm assuming you made a copy. Oh, what's that? I think I deposited, either, I de yes, it was probably a copy of the check. Yes, mm. okay. a photocopy. Mm -hmm. Or I deposited it on my phone, oh, okay. and then just kept the check. One of those. You forgot about those modern conveniences. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, you had 